Hi, how do you start a lesson? I am sure by now many of you teachers have an established way of starting your lesson, but are you aware that mixing things up can actually add life into your lessons? Here are top three ways in which you can add life and fun into your lesson, especially if you are introducing a new topic. Keep watching to find out more. Welcome back. Before I dive into the top three ways in which you can introduce a lesson, I want you guys to understand that teachers have different approaches on how they intend to teach their lessons. There is no standard approach. Choose what works best for you. The first approach that you may want to consider is video. Videos are very effective, especially when dealing with young learners and when you want to introduce a new topic. Try to search for videos that goes in line with the topic. For example, if you intend to introduce a lesson like camping, you may want to search for camping videos on YouTube that portrays real people out perhaps hiking and setting up tents in the mountains. When students watch these activities on video, motion pictures, you know they say a picture is worth a thousand words. It's visually appealing. It will raise their interest naturally and they will tend to be more engaged in the lesson. So remember to make use of videos. The second approach that you may want to use is question. Personally, I use the question tag a lot. With question, you may just walk into the classroom and you throw out a question there, a general question to all the students. By so doing, you're trying to test and see how much they know about the topic or how little they know about the topic. Again, I'll use the camping activity. Maybe when you walk into the classroom, you ask a question like, when was the last time you went hiking? Have you ever been to a camp before? When you ask such questions, the kids will be propelled to express themselves. It comes naturally. And when they tend to engage in the discussion, you, the teacher, have a feel on just how you would certainly approach the topic because you are able to gauge the understanding of the students. Question works best. Advice, before you get into the classroom, try to write down few questions that you may want to ask the students. Another way to give out questions is for you to split the students into groups. If you are teaching a class where the English ability isn't good, then I'll advise you split the students into groups and throw out questions to each group. Give them time to work on it, to brainstorm, and then you can create time for the students to discuss their answers. This equally works best. By the way, I'd like to know from you teachers, how do you introduce your lesson? Leave your thoughts and opinion in the comment section of this video. And the last method is deliberate mistakes. Yeah, this may sound funny. Uh, some of you teachers are perfectionists. You wouldn't want to make mistakes in the course of planning out your lesson. But I'll encourage you to do that because mistakes are a great brain teaser. Again, with the same topic, camping, you may decide to create a list of camping vocabularies. Within this list, make sure you include things that are not related to camping. When we talk of camping vocabularies, you're looking at tents, touch lights, boots, maybe a car to transfer things. But instead of having all these uh, vocabularies listed in order, you may decide to put something else that has no relation to camping activity. Let's say you may decide to uh, put a fire truck. Yeah. You may also decide to put an ambulance. These other things that I've mentioned in actual sense has no relation to the topic. When you do this, you give out the list to the students, print it out in the form of a worksheet, create groups, give out the list and tell the students to like uh, search the right words that goes in line with this topic. When they work on that, you shall see the progress and understand just how much they understand this new topic that you intend to introduce. This is known as deliberate mistake. Another way that you can implement this strategy is for you to use the mistakes of your students in the course of the lesson. Maybe you must have taught 
this same lesson in the past and you realize that the previous batch or generation did a lot of mistakes maybe in the form of scripts exam scripts you keep these scripts when you get into the classroom you use these same uh, scripts to discuss with your students and with these mistakes they will be able to deliberate and try to uh, come up with answers to these mistakes that is a strategy that equally works best i use it as well so i advise you try to use that and it's equally good for you to make use of this strategy with uh, older students maybe you teach at secondary or high schools you should make use of this mind you if you try this method it's not working maybe because the english ability of your students isn't that good do not stress don't bother move on with the topic you may play a video because the students can't understand english they fail to get the whole point of the video move on with the lesson don't be held back because you feel like it's not working likewise if you ask questions they are unable to provide answers tell them the answer to the question and move on you give them sheets with mistakes they are unable to correct these mistakes move on don't be held back because a style that you choose did not work remember as a teacher you're doing your utmost best to make your lesson more interesting and fun and not for you to give up when things doesn't go your way thanks for watching see you all bye